In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss how to find out which widget triggered a specific function. Now, first of all, why would we even want to do this? Well, there are two reasons. The first reason is that we would want to perform some kind of operation on that widget, like change its uh, color or change the text or anything like that, or disable it, stuff like that. Second, we may want to, you know, perform a different operation based on which widget triggered that function. That's also one reason. All right, so that's why we would want to do this. There are other benefits as well, such as when you have a lot of different widgets, like 50 or 100 different widgets. So obviously you're not gonna define a separate function for each widget. What you would do is take similar widgets, widgets which have some overlap in their functionality and use, and you would give them the same function. And you would just use condition, conditional statements to you know change what operation you're performing all right so that's the theory of this let's find out in today's tutorial how we can actually do this so here's our code let me just remove this one we don't need it all right now there are two types of functions there are two types of ways in which functions are called in takeinter in the first one the first type the event object is passed and when the event object is passed, you can just easily find out which widget triggered it by doing event.widget. That's very simple. This is, this is the easiest way. And this type of function triggering happens whenever we use the bind event. Okay, so if I do this, button 1, and over here, I do on click. If I click on this label, Okay, button one means the left mouse click. If I click on it, it's gonna trigger this function. Okay, and we can see that the label widget is right there. This is how takeinter kind of names its widgets. Okay, and we can actually verify that, hold on, if event, or actually let's just print this out. Print event dot widget is equal to L1 and this should print out true watch see it prints out true because both of these are equal all right now this is important to keep in mind because some widgets or sorry in some ways that you trigger a function in takeinter the event object is not passed a very popular example is when you uh, use a button hold on Let's just, uh, let's keep the label over there and let's duplicate this, okay, on click B and just remove that and remove that because there's no event object going to be passed. I know it's not, okay. I'm going to create a button, tk.button and then root as the parent, text is I am a button, okay, then we'll pack this button in. Okay, 20, pad x is 20, pad y is 20, and we'll just give the label the same. Okay, now I'm going to pass in using the command parameter on click b. And I'm just going to run this code now. And if I click the button, only this is going to be printed out. And let me just prove to you that no event object is passed, because if I print, sorry, if I, you know, put event over there, and then I click the button, it's going to give us this error because, you know, because no event object was automatically passed. Unlike the label, which was, you know, done using the bind function, it's not going to automatically pass an event object. So this is one example. Now, I'm not saying that if you use the command parameter, then an event object will not be passed. It's actually different on a case by case basis. So some widgets might, some, some widgets won't. So in cases like the button, how would you find out which widget was the one that, that was triggering it? How do you know which button triggered it? If you have like five buttons and all share the, sa the same function, how do you find out which button triggered that function? Well, this is, this is actually possible. You can do this with Lambda functions and by passing in an additional parameter. Basically, the logic is this. If the button is not going to pass in uh, the event object, let's just pass in the widget ourselves. Let's 
pass in our reference ourselves. So I'll do this, okay? Lambda object is equal to button, okay? Then like this, hold on. Here we go. Button is not defined. And yeah, you're right about that. Button is not defined. So what I'm gonna do is a bit of a hack. Well, it's not a hack, it's, a, it's, it's an actual thing. I'm just using the config function, which can be used to configure a widget after it's already been defined. Okay, so I gave it this parameter after it's defined. I hope you understood. That, uh, I hope you understood the logic because we couldn't assign this button to the object parameter over here because it wasn't defined yet. But now it is up here. Okay, and now I'm gonna pass in the object parameter. Now I'm sure this is the first time you're seeing this kind of format. It's kind of weird, I know, but uh, at least I hope it makes sense. This is the parameter. We're assigning it a value, which is declared up here and then we're passing in the parameter to our function. Okay, let's just rename this to widget and then we'll print out widget. Okay, if I click this button, all right, all right, that's great. We got, we got our output. Okay, it says button. And let's just verify this widget is equal to button. And this should be true. And it is, great. Okay, true. Now let's just take a look at one more thing, how this can be practically used. Now, if you have multiple buttons, for example, whoops, duplicate this and just change this to button two, change that to button two. And here we'll come here and say, if widget, is equal to button, then l1.configure, let's configure that, let's change the text on the label that we created earlier, okay? So I'm gonna do label, or was it text? It was text, sorry. So text triggered by function, sorry, what, what, what am I doing? Button one, okay? elif widget is equal to button two l1 dot config text is equal to triggered by button two okay so this is how it can be practically used we're performing different operations okay based on which function triggered it and let me just change these names these are these are terrible names all right there we go and now I'm going to click button one. It says triggered by button one. I click button two. It says triggered by button two. So this is how we can perform different operations based on which widget was passed. Okay. So yeah, that's about it. And yeah, I can't think of anything else I forgot. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you, if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye then.